Hello and welcome to this session on information retrieval. Today we'll discuss uh, today we'll discuss documents with some kind of structure, uh, and we'll discuss zonal in, uh, indexing and uh, also scoring with uh, zonal indexes. So far we have been seeing or discussing documents which are completely unstructured, but in the real world we usually get documents which have some kind of structure. We, um, uh, we classify uh, usually these as zones and uh, fields. So let me explain what I mean. So here is a screenshot from Cora uh, um, where uh, someone has asked a question and there seems to be 100 plus answers and uh, there is one answer contributed from one person. Okay, so if you look at this, so this uh, content has a structure, right? So there's a question, there is an answer, there could be comments and so on. Now, if we have such structured documents, uh, how to search effectively, um, you know, leveraging this structure? That's the question ahead of us. Usually we associate a document with fields and zones. Um, so let's say I have a document and any content that is searchable um, is what I call as a zone. So I have a title which is searchable. I have body which has content which is searchable. So these are let's say different zones of this document. I also have several fields. Uh, for instance, we have file name, uh, author, uh, date of creation. Um, you know, in some cases I may take the title of the document also as a field if it is uh, short enough um, you know so I have a choice here with title whether to classify it as a um, as a zone or a field so usually if something can get into my index uh, where I can um, go ahead and perform a search then I would classify it as a zone uh, but in cases where uh, the field is numeric or uh, fits into a uh, range then I may I, I usually call it a field uh, here is here are some sample queries uh, find documents authored by William Shakespeare in 1601 uh, containing the phrase uh, you Brutus right so the moment I read containing the phrase I expect that there will be a dictionary there will be an index and I can do uh, uh, matching on the on an inverted index um, so when I try to match with an inverted index, I am looking for uh, different zones in, uh, now in this case. And the question now is, with multiple zones available, can I do things better? Uh, similarly, there are other information given in the query. So I need to use a filter of the year 1601. And I also need to check whether the author is William Shakespeare. So if I have uh, fields available uh, at the time of matching, then I can improve precision um, uh, for these kind of queries. Here's another query. Find documents with the merchant in the title and William in the author list uh, and the phrase gentle rain uh, in the body. So again, this query talks about multiple zones and multiple fields. Zones are arbitrary free text. Um, fields may take a relatively small set of values. Um, uh, usually fields are useful in a range query. So for example, if the query has a uh, query asks you for a year between 1600 and 1700. Um, uh, so when, when you want to conduct such a query, we call that those queries as range queries and uh, fields are extremely useful in answering uh, such queries. So the question that we are going to ponder today is how to index uh, zones and fields. Here is a example from Stack Overflow. So there is a question, um, how to make a new list in Java. And uh, this is the title of this question. And here is the actual question. So we create a set as sets my set equals new, new hash set. How do we create a list in Java? Uh, that's the question. And uh, here is an answer for this question. And if you look at it, uh, along with the answer, there is a variety of metadata associated with, for example, um, uh, how many people have liked it, 
uh, how many people have liked the question how many people have liked the answer um, we also have comments we also have the date on which it was edited uh, the person who edited and so on all right uh, so here is a quiz for you. Uh, assuming we are indexing this Stack Overflow data, uh, which of the following do you think are zones? Take a minute, pause the video and answer. So here is the answer so uh, question answer comments and code blocks so code blocks are these uh, the one in the gray with the gray background which carry the code uh, we call them as code blocks um, so these contain indexable content uh, so we call them as zones and the number of answers and the number of comments um, are not useful in direct matching but they are useful in uh, in query processing so uh, for example, if I want to retrieve all those uh, uh, questions which have more than 10 answers, um, in such a case, I would uh, uh, issue a query and I would expect to match that number, the number of answers with it. Okay, so how do we index uh, these kind of zones and fields? There is one choice here. Uh, one option is to create a separate uh, index for each field and each zone. Um, for example, uh, as I've shown here, um, for abstract, so, so these are all uh, inverted index entries for William. Um, now for each entry, like William, uh, we maintain multiple lists. Uh, so here is the one for abstract, here is the one for title. So this says that document ID 2, 4, 8 and 16 add William in the title. And similarly for the uh, for each zone. So that's, uh, that's what I call as a zonal index and I can go ahead and keep uh, uh, a zonal index for each zone that I want to have. And uh, uh, similarly I could have a parametric uh, index uh, for each field. A parametric index is simply an index with a parameter that you could uh, search with. For example, as we saw, um, uh, let's say the date of creation is a parameter, a metadata or a field associated with my uh, document. Um, so when a query comes, I can match the query with that field and check whether okay, if someone wants um, a document, uh, uh, some, a question which was answered in the last 15 days. Uh, or an answer which has come within 15 days for a set of queries. So these kind of uh, queries can be answered uh, using parametric indices. Okay, is there a better way to index uh, zones and fields? Well, the problem with this approach is that um, we are using too much of space uh, to store all these um, uh, multiple zonal indexes. Uh, is there a way we can improve on this? Yes, um, we could uh, simply have one um, uh, list for William, which looks like this. So it says that uh, um, document ID 2 uh, um, is uh, relevant. It carried William uh, in its author field, its author zone rather. Uh, and then uh, title uh, had also had, uh, uh, I mean, document 2's title also had William in it and so on. Um, is this useful? So we see that this is also useful when it comes to scoring. Let's see how. We usually um, notice that uh, not all zones are equally important and uh, we assign some kind of weight to each zone. So for example, uh, let's say author uh, is the least important uh, of uh, author title and body. Uh, and let's assume body of the uh, post is uh, the most important when it comes to score. So, uh, I mean, this, this is just an illustrative example. The weights may be different in the real world. Um, so I'm going to distribute uh, um, one amongst all these uh, zones that I have. So in this case, uh, author is 0.2, title is 0.3, and let's say body is uh, 0.5. With this kind of uh, weight, I could simply do a linear combination or find a weighted sum uh, 
um, uh, as my scope. So here is a question for you. Consider a collection with the following uh, zone weights. Um, author has a weight 0.2 and title 0.3 and body 0.5. And uh, if the term Shakespeare um, were to appear in the title and body zones, but not in the author zone, uh, the score of the document would be what? Take a minute, pause the video and try it yourself. I should also me mention that uh, we look for either a, a, the appearance or a non-appearance of a term. So if a term appears in a specific uh, zone, let's say in the ith zone, then we simply uh, use a 1 uh, for SI. So that way the linear sum works out to be a uh, sum of GIs where uh, the ith zone contains the term uh, that we are looking for. With that, you should be able to answer this question. Yes, indeed. Uh, the answer should be 0.8. Uh, the reason is that uh, we have uh, Shakespeare appearing in uh, title and body. So uh, ideally, it's summation of G1 plus G2 plus G3. But since uh, G1 does not have uh, the, uh, the term Shakespeare, um, so not in the author zone, so it doesn't appear uh, in the author zone. So uh, G1 times 0 uh, is added to G2 times 1 and G3 times 1. So we the weighted sum simply adds up to 0.8. All right. Um, so this is what we call as a weighted zone scoring on an inverted index. Uh, we simply try to do a match. Uh, and whenever uh, there is a match, we add GI to an array, uh, let's say a score of document ID. So for uh, every document ID, let's say we maintain a score um, and whenever we do a match as we do the merge process we compute the match we can simply add up uh, we can compute the weighted zone scoring because now we have everything stored together in one uh, uh, list item um, we call this uh, array as an accumulator sometimes and once I have done this uh, then I have one array in which I can uh, look for the top documents and retrieve them as the result The natural next question is how to assign zone weights. So I know uh, that okay, there are tight, there is title, there is uh, uh, there is uh, body and so on. So so I, I see the zones, but how do I know which zone is important and which zone is not important and how important are these zones? So the question is to assign uh, the weights. Uh, of course, we could go. Uh, to machine learning and if we could have some human annotated training examples um, let's say consider that there are only two zones for now title and body and uh, the uh, uh, the value of st is one given a document and a query if the query term exists in the title and similarly uh, it's one uh, for sb if the query term exists in the body okay so this is retrievable from the data and we need humans to give a relevance judgment whether that document is uh, relevant to the query or not. So let's say we have this human judgments. We could um, use uh, uh, machine learning to uh, figure out the weights. But do we really need machine learning to figure out the weights? In, this, in these kind of simple examples, um, we could possibly uh, find them out ourselves. Here is an example. Uh, let's say the query is Linux and the document ID is 37 and the user judgment is 1, meaning it is relevant. Uh, similarly, I have for different queries, uh, different documents. So for essentially for a query document pair, I have a, a relevance judgment. Um, now I can go ahead and uh, run a program which would check whether uh, the given term uh, is there in the document or not. So let's say Linux exists in document ID or not. And specifically, I can also check whether uh, Linux appears in the title or Linux appears in the body. Uh, so if it appears in title, ST becomes 1. If it appears in the body, SB becomes 1. And we also have uh, the user judgments 
right? So so we have this, and and from this um, uh, ST and SB values, uh, I can come up with a zonal uh, score, right? But before I could get to the zonal score, I would need a, a zonal weights. Uh, let's say G1 is 0.3 or uh, and body is let's say 1 minus 0.3 which is 0.7 um, so so let's say let's assume some kind of a zonal weight and and once I have the zonal weight we can come up with uh, our own score so in this case uh, it would be 0.3 times uh, 1 plus 0.7 times 1 which is 1 uh, and similarly for the system the our, uh, our way of zonal scoring would give a value of uh, 0.7 uh, and so on okay so we came up with uh, 1.7 1 and 0.7 and the actual user judgment is 1111 so of course there is an error and we can measure the magnitude of the difference between our scores and the user judgments um, if g is the uh, title weight uh, then uh, we could quantify the error uh, in each of the four cases possible um, so the cases where ST and SB are zeros or zero ones, one zero or one one. So for each of these cases, uh, we can see what is the error that we have observed. Uh, here, if you look at it, um, for zero zero case, there is no error. There is no example with zero zero at all. Uh, for zero one case, uh, so for zero one, uh, the error seems to be uh, one minus uh, G. Um, right because uh, the user judgment is uh, one and uh, uh, i have a one minus g score as the error for one zero example um, uh, i would have uh, g as the error um, uh, uh, okay uh, why do i have g as the error uh, because um, so the title takes away g and r score would be g um, and uh, sb i mean in the body let's say the word did not exist then 0 times 1 minus g is what we would apply uh, to come up with our score so if you look at it we applied uh, g so this is this is how we have scored right so uh, so this is not the error this is how we have uh, uh, scored the document so if st and sb are 0 we score 0 if st is 0 and sb is 1 we score 1 minus g um, and if st is 1 and sb is 0 uh, we score g and uh, in in case everything is 1 then uh, our score would be one and we have the user judgment also so given that we have the user judgment and we have our way of scoring we can complete uh, the scoring for all these documents so we now have our scores and we have the user judgment so we can compute the error so uh, let's take uh, the squared errors and try to minimize them our objective is to find a g such that we minimize this total error Okay, so what do we do uh, to find a minimum G which minimizes this total error? Let's see. So let's uh, try to quantify the error for a specific example. So I, I'm taking the 0, 1 case. Um, in the 0, 1 case, uh, how much is the uh, error um, uh, between, when we compare our system with the uh, user data? So let's uh, let's define two variables here, uh, n01r and n01n, where n01r is for the 01 case, the number of relevant documents and 01n, let's say, uh, denotes the number of uh, non-relevant documents uh, uh, for the 01 case right so the error is uh, in this case is simply 1 minus 1 minus g uh, the whole square right so what am i trying to do i take the relevant score given by the judges and the score that i have come up uh, with so judges have given 1 and i gave uh, 1 minus g so 1 minus 1 minus g the whole square is the um, error that I have come up with for one relevant document, right? It's so a document which is relevant, so it should have a one. Uh, and similarly, there are if there are n relevant documents, uh, then I need to multiply this n times to get uh, the total error uh, for the zero one relevant documents. Uh, similarly, there in this list there could be uh, documents which are judged as non-relevant. 
uh, in which case uh, I would have zero which is the user's judgment minus uh, the same one minus g which I have come up with the whole square and uh, if there are n such non-relevant documents then I have to multiply the, this with n so n zero one yeah so if I sum these up this would be my total error and my objective is to find a g which minimizes this value what do I do So what do I do? So that's the question. So before, uh, so if I, I can, so here I have worked out only the 0, 1 case. You could work out the other cases also, such as 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and so on. So when I, when I add up all the errors, this is what I get. This is the total error uh, observed um, when I compare my system with the user relevance. Uh, now my objective is to minimize, uh, find a value of g which minimizes this uh, whole error. What could I do? Yes, you guessed it, right? So simply differentiate uh, this with respect to g and equate it to 0. And uh, that should get you n10r plus n01n over the sum of all documents or our corpus size. Okay, uh, so this goes on to say that uh, sometimes we don't need ML um, uh, for some learning task. We could just use our knowledge of mathematics uh, to do that. So that uh, so the summary of the story is that uh, we uh, can uh, have zonal indexes and parameterized field indexes. And once we have them, we can uh, answer uh, uh, range queries and uh, different kinds of queries which use specific uh, zonal information. Uh, one missing piece in this whole part is uh, to assign some weights so that we could go ahead and score the documents better and for that we need to somehow learn the weights. Uh, I have shown a simple example assuming there's only two zones um, we could uh, uh, use the user relevant uh, relevance information to compute the optimal value of uh, g and once I have that, I can go ahead and do the scoring. That's all there is for today. Thank you uh, for listening and see you in another lecture soon.